Hey there everyone, CPO here. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the install and basic configuration setup and overview of the Vanderveer Engineering Haldex controller, the VE Haldex controller. You can see here their website, but basically this is a piggyback controller that mounts into your all wheel drive MQB platform vehicle. They also have some for Volvo and it uses the factory wiring harness and just plugs in place. And uh, yeah, this is the one I got, the Haldex controller Gen 5. And I also got the manual switch, although I didn't actually install it and I haven't ever used it, but uh, maybe I'll do that later. But actually the app has been so useful that I haven't felt like I needed to install the switch. But uh, yeah, that's it. So let me just show you what it comes with so that you're familiar. This is the Haldex controller itself. It's just basically a small controller box that has a couple of plugs. And then it comes with the wiring harness to tap in to the uh, Haldex controller. And then if you opt for the optional switch, it will come with the switch wiring already there. Plus here's the switch. Yeah, that's what it looks like. That's how it comes. So the Haldex controller plugs are underneath the rear seat on the driver's side. So you can pull out the bottom of that rear seat. And then if you get into that little compartment where the wiring is, you'll see there is a harness that is plugged in together right there. The other side of the seat, the passenger side is the fuel pump. This is the Haldex controller. So. Uh, what we're going to do is disconnect this plug right here and then just basically plug the Vanderveer Haldex controller in line into it. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. And then what we want to do is run the cables out. I'm going to run them into the back behind the seat and I'll show you that here in a second. First, I want to go ahead and get these plugged in. So, you know, male to female, female to male clip it back into place. And then I've got this harness that I'm gonna run back. And uh, I'm just going to stick this underneath the back of the rear seat. There will be a little bit of a gap. So it'll make sense here in a second once I get it all plugged in and uh, put back together. All right, here you go. Like I said, I'm gonna feed this underneath the back of the rear seat. And then that way, when I put the bottom part of the rear seat in, it will just rest on top and hide that cable. Uh, so that will be not visible at all once I put the seat back in. All right, so the rear seat goes back together and we are done there. Now what I'm gonna do is move back into the trunk area and I've gotta get some stuff out of the way and I'll remove that floor panel there. You can see where the wiring ended up when I shoved it back through from the front of the vehicle. And all we're gonna do is plug in the controller into the harness. It will only go one way. You can't really screw it up. And then again, if I was gonna run that switch, I would run that cable up to the front where I could mount that switch. But I haven't done that yet. Velcro sticks nicely to the carpet, which is what I do back there. And that will hold it in place. And then I'll put the cover back on uh, the rear compartment there, the floor, and it's got plenty of room uh, to breathe. It's got some airflow in there or some room for air, I guess I will say. It's not suffocated entirely. But yeah, that's it. The install is done. Like, it's that simple. So now what we need to do is go to the app and get it set up and show you how the app works. Now there's an Android app and there's an iPhone app. I'm gonna show you this first one on iPhone. So you can get this from the Play Store. It's VEAWD Controller is the name of the app. It's the same name on Android. I'm an iPhone user, so this is the app that I primarily use. Although I will say Android is probably a better choice. So you can see here, it doesn't connect. You do need to enable Bluetooth so that it can find it, but you have to go search for the controller. So down here it says search controller and it's going to show you a list and then right there at the top it says Haldex controller. That's what I want. I'm going to click that. You'll see the green bar connect and then you'll see that red Bluetooth symbol turn white and then you're good to go. You should also see some RPM indicator if the vehicle's running. 
And when every time you load up the app, you should see that turn white. Now, right now I'm in bypass mode, but if you click any of these, it will change modes. You can get to settings using this cogwheel for whatever mode you're in, or you can come over here to the menu and select independent settings for whatever you want. So this, for example, is the speed setting. And so that's going to uh, allow you to determine what Haldex ratio from front to rear uh, given a vehicle speed. Same thing with throttle settings, except it's for the percentage of the throttle pedal being pressed. You can control how much Haldex. Boost, same thing, control the split with boost uh, values. Now I haven't used any of these. I really only used track and speed. So this setting here is the map setting. Starts to get a little bit more complicated because you've got now uh, an X and a Y axis. On the Y axis, you have your throttle, and then on the X axis, you have your speed, and you can control the Haldex split using those two parameters. The map setting advanced allows you to make a few minor adjustments there. It's pretty self-explanatory. Track setting, that gets a little bit more complicated. You have a low speed map and a high speed map. You have a throttle axis on the Y and then the X is wheel angle. And then you have a high speed version, same thing, throttle and wheel angle, but you can define separate parameters or splits depending on if you're going low speed or high speed. So you can find that in the settings. The speed interval is where that jumps from, from low to high. Uh, you can also make some other adjustments, including your gear ratios. You can reset to defaults. I am reset. I'm basically running default two. Uh, and uh, yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time tweaking it yet. Here's where you adjust your axis for the uh, wheel and the throttle intervals. And you can fine tune that. And then you have your general settings where you can go in and make some, some sort of global adjustments. So you can see here, uh, driving setting, you can expand that and you can disable uh, the Haldex entirely uh, when parking, which is kind of nice. If you don't want it binding up, you can do reverse disable, um, yeah, just all kinds of settings. And then you can uh, collapse that back down when you're done making adjustments. And then you'll be able to see, you can expand the CAN inputs. So I have all of these enabled, particularly parking brake, because I'm using the parking brake to disable the Haldex entirely. So it's like going into front wheel drive only, which is good for burnouts. I'll show you that here at the end of this video, I'll show you more detail. You can configure what you want the default mode to be. Mine's always set to last use. So whatever I have it at last, that's every time I uh, load up the app, that's what it's gonna be. And once you set this, by the way, you don't need the app for it to work in that mode, but you just use the app to set the mode and then make the, you can you know view the, um, the split right there and all the other parameters, so. Uh, but if you set it to speed or you set it to track or you set it to off, which would be the equivalent of a GTI, if you wanted a two wheel drive GTI, um, then you can just leave it like that and it will just stay like that until you fire up the app again and make the change. So you can choose just to lock the Haldex in whatever split you want all the way up to 50-50. That's what the lock is. And you use the little cog uh, setting wheel there to adjust what level you want. 100 zero would be full front wheel drive only. And that would be the equivalent of also having it to off. But yeah, I used speed and track mostly. Uh, you can see here, I do have the brake indicator. So when I'm braking, uh, it lights up and tells me, and it also, I can set it to ignore or include the brake. And then the parking brake there uh, also will light up when I'm using the parking brake. Which like I said, perfect for burnout mode. If there's anything that makes this super exciting, it's burnout mode. All right, so now we're in the Android app. And like I said, the Android app is a little bit more fully featured. Do make sure that you allow it to access location. Uh, no, it doesn't seem like it should, but you need that to be able to find the Haldex controller and then just say yes to whatever permissions are necessary for it to communicate. And you'll have to go find it or it may search for it immediately. I believe on the Android, it searched for it 
uh, by default. But once you're connected, everything's pretty much the same, except for you've got some configuration options that look a little bit different. I did find in the Android app, I was able to adjust like speed and steering angle here in the driving settings, but on the iPhone app, I wasn't able to make that change. So um, not sure if it's a limitation of the iPhone app or not. I know that Android is a primary app that this is being developed in and somebody else is trying to port it to Android for them and uh, it doesn't actually work entirely the same. I will say also, you know, I tried to set it to miles per hour and it just doesn't work. It stays at kilometers per hour. So nothing you can do about that. Um, you do have um, some other things you can do with the Android app, such as logging and such. But here we go, check out, I'm showing you basically uh, how the brake, the parking brake, if I hold that up, it will put it into front wheel drive mode only. So here's a quick little burnout for you, just to show you how that works. Just hold up the parking brake, do launch control like a GTI, Oof. smoke it around and uh, let go of the brake and it immediately re-engages the Haldex and you saw it jump there. Um, so this is what that looks like from the outside, dragging my ass like a dog with worms. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's how launch control uh, burnout mode works. But yeah, a lot, of, a lot of cool stuff in this. A lot of thought went into the development. Whether or not it provides value for me, I've still yet to decide. I did go out and do some testing with uh, different modes enabled and then disabled to look for some deltas. Am I getting a faster zero to 60? Am I getting a faster 60 foot time? Am I doing better in autocross? So I'll do a follow-up video on that. I'm still still trying to do some testing, um, but I wouldn't expect any major changes. But if you have a specific use case, it might be super helpful for you. Anyway, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.